Hi, I'm Jeffrey. Welcome back to Night Falls. Come, settle in for tonight's calming meditation and soothing bedtime story. As always, don't worry if you fall asleep before the end. You can drift off whenever you're ready. I've been getting up nice and early recently, and while I never find it very easy to do, I love making the most of the morning sun or rain, going out for long walks with Otto, and getting the world all to myself. Magical. Come, take a pew beside the campfire tonight as we follow Nile. Born and raised in the sleepy coastal town of Glenarm in Northern Ireland, Niall was raised on a slower pace of life. As the young man arrives back home after years building a career in the Big Apple, he's finally able to find the peace and contentment he's been missing. Just as I felt the stress of city life melt away when I rediscovered nightfalls, In leaving New York behind, Niall is able to enjoy the home comforts, faces, and places he has missed for so long. Before we join Niall on his journey home, let's take a moment to relax and wind down. Stretch out your arms and legs however feels best for you, and allow your body the opportunity to reset itself as you move through your joints and lean into that stretch. When you're feeling ready, come to a comfortable position and allow yourself a moment of stillness as your body comes back to neutral after another long day. As you lie there relaxing, take a deep breath in and gather up any stress or strain lingering in the muscles of your core, your back and your shoulders. As you exhale, release that tension on the gentle tide of your breath. Feel that physical tension ebbing out of your body with each cycle of your breath. Inhaling once more, sink into your joints, your knees, hips and shoulder blades, gathering up any stress compounded there, and exhale releasing it as you sigh out in relief. Now, allow your attention to drift deeper, sinking beneath your skin and into the very core of your being. Drawing a deep breath in, gather up any emotional tension bound up in your heart or your head, and as you sigh out, release it, feeling the thoughts and fears that trouble you beginning to dissolve as you drift deeper and deeper into a state of relaxation. And Niall's journey begins. The chugging of the train engine felt comforting and familiar. Niall laid back in his seat and sighed, leaning his head on the cold window to his left. He watched fondly as the train zoomed past rolling hills of lush, green land and rain spattered against the windows. 
It was a far cry from the city surroundings he had grown accustomed to over recent years, but it felt like home. It had been years since he had been back in Northern Ireland, and he was amazed to see how quickly his worries and stresses had melted away the second he stepped off the plane. He felt immediately welcomed back. Everyone was so friendly here, wishing him a good day and a safe journey home as he walked through the airport. He had even shared a coffee with a stranger who was boarding the same flight as him. People were so much more open and talkative here than they were in New York. He'd almost forgotten what it felt like to trade life stories with a stranger. Niall had moved to the Big Apple, New York City, five years ago. It had always been an ambition of his, and his family had been very proud of him for pursuing his dreams. They described him as the successful one in the family. Although Niall had been wondering in recent years, whether he was all that successful after all. While his siblings and peers had been falling in love, growing their families, buying houses, and enjoying their lives in Northern Ireland with friends and family close by, Niall's life had been quite different. He lived in a small apartment in Lower Manhattan with a flatmate, His days were spent working long hours at the accountancy firm he worked for in a swanky office at the top of a high-rise building in the centre of the city. His weekends were spent going to the theatre, eating in expensive restaurants, strolling around Central Park and admiring the city skyline. It all sounded very glamorous in theory, but there was one issue. He was doing all of it alone. Making friends in such a big city was hard. Everybody hurried from place to place, and people kept their heads down on the trains. Aside from his workmates and his regular server at the coffee shop on the corner, he didn't come into contact with many people who wanted to take the time to talk. City life could be a lonely life. On the outside, his life looked successful and glamorous. But really, Niall was lonely. In the five years since he moved to New York City, he had only visited home once, for Christmas. Flights were expensive, and he was working around the clock at his office so finding the time to go home to Northern Ireland could be difficult. Plus, he wanted to avoid the awkward questions he was bound to be asked about his life. Everyone was very supportive and wanted to know all about his exciting life in the big city. But Niall hated having to answer their questions and pretend like everything was great. When deep down... It was all falling short of his expectations. He didn't want to destroy other people's dreams too. He wanted to keep the fantasy alive for his family, as long as possible, so they could live vicariously through him. His home in Glen Arm was like a totally different world to New York. It was a small coastal village in County Antrim, known for its 16th century castle and charming cobblestone streets. Growing up, he had thought that there wasn't much to do in Glenarm and longed to escape to a busier way of life. But as the train pulled into the railway station and he took in the view of the village and the bay, Niall wondered why he'd ever gone away. He took a deep breath of the fresh Irish air and exhaled contentedly. He was home. He could remember the route to his family home 
as if he had only been here yesterday. Almost as soon as he had knocked on the navy blue front door of his parents' terraced house, the door flung open and his father pulled him into a firm hug. Niall felt himself melt into his father's strong chest. It was like a weight had been lifted from his shoulders. Hi, Dad. He grinned, patting him on the back and trying to play it cool. He didn't want to let anyone know how relieved he was to be back. His father led him down the hallway into the open plan kitchen and dining room at the back, where he was met by a sudden rumble of voices cheering, Welcome home. Hidden at the back of the house was pretty much every member of his family, smiling and greeting him with ecstatic joy. Niall couldn't believe how many people were here to greet him. There was his older brother, Rory, and his wife, Shauna, with their two-year-old son, Kian. Little Kian was thrust into Niall's arms immediately. Ashamedly, he had still not met the little tyke. It had been that long since he had last been home that Kian hadn't even been born last time Niall was here. Little Kian wriggled out of Niall's arms defiantly and raced over to the dining table, covered with plates of nibbly foods. He snatched a handful of sausage rolls off the table and dashed back to his mother to eat in peace. Niall laughed at the toddler's outburst. Little Kian certainly took after his dad with his appetite. Niall felt a strong arm wrap around his shoulders and his younger brother Shane thrust a can of Guinness into his hand, exclaiming, Welcome home, brother. We've missed you. The whole family seemed to be delighted to have him home in equal measure. He was embraced by his cousins, Aoife, Fionn and Liam, and his young cousin Orla nodded to him in acknowledgement as she tapped away on her mobile phone. At fourteen years old, Orla was clearly at the awkward teenage stage where she needed to act indifferent to be cool. He noticed his grandma Eve and grandpa Tiernan sat in armchairs by the pine dresser and gave them fond hugs and kissed their cheeks. They were so delighted to see him and promptly declared that it had been far too long since they had last seen him and asked if he had found himself a nice girl yet. Niall made his excuses and skirted away from the conversation in search of greeting everyone else. His uncle Brian greeted him with his usual nickname, Boy Wonder, much to Niall's distaste, and his auntie Ashling expressed how envious she was of his luxurious life in the city. Everyone was in great spirit. It was as if nothing had changed. The family dynamics were just the same as ever. The best reunion was left until last. He saw his mother standing across the room, by the window, patiently waiting for him to make his way through the sea of faces so that she could greet him properly. Hi, Mum, Niall said softly, eventually making his way over to her. She stood up onto her tiptoes and wrapped her arms around his shoulders adoringly. They stood there for several seconds, savouring the moment. The fruity scent of her perfume flooded his senses, and he felt as if he was being transported back to being a child again. Her hair smelt faintly of flour and sugar, and Niall wondered if she had spent the morning baking. 
pulling out of their embrace. His mother said proudly, I made your favourite apple cake, and gestured to the dining table. Niall smiled gratefully, his assumption confirmed. He thanked her, and she asked him how he was getting on in New York. He gave her his usual spiel about how well work was going and how lucky he was to live in such an impressive city. His mother stared at him as he spoke. Her eyes glazed over, as if she had heard this all before. He knew that what she really wanted to know was whether he was happy. But he brushed off the conversation quickly, to avoid any further prying questions. She ruffled his sandy blonde hair affectionately and smiled at him with a pitying smile that mothers do all too well. He knew that his mother could read him like a book, but he would never admit that to her. He took in the sight of his family home, nostalgically. There was still the same unpleasant red and yellow patterned wallpaper on the walls and brown wooden cabinets in the kitchen. The pine dresser was crammed full of photo frames, ugly ornaments and bizarre souvenir ceramic plates. Black and white photographs of the village from years gone by were framed on the walls, along with a framed family photograph of himself, his brothers and his parents, when they were just small children. A plastic floral tablecloth draped over the dining table, and a classic lunch of small sandwiches, pork pies, chocolate rolls, and crisps adorned the top. If an interior designer walked in, they would faint from shock. But to Niall, it was perfect. It was a house full of memories. It wasn't clinical and cold, like the plain white apartment he rented in New York. It was warm and colourful. Love and devotion radiated from every corner of the old house. With all of his family around him again, laughing and joking together, eating and drinking happily in his parents' house, he wondered whether this was what life was really about. He hadn't felt happier in a long time, and that was attributed to the fact he was surrounded by his family once again. They had all changed so much over time, and yet, so much had remained the same within their family dynamics. Niall felt like he had missed a lot being away for so long, and he felt a pang of longing he hadn't felt in a long time. By the time everybody had left his surprise homecoming party, it was seven o'clock. All that was left at his parents' house was Niall, his younger brother Shane, and the few remaining crumbs of party food on the table. Niall was buzzing from the excitement of seeing everyone again and didn't want the evening to end. So he and Shane decided to head to the pub to continue the party. There weren't many places to go in Glenarm. They would often venture farther afield to the likes of Port Rush when they were younger. But tonight, they hopped on a bus to nearby Carnlough to stay close to home. They found themselves a table in the Glen Cloy Inn and Shane went up to the bar to buy them a couple of pints. Niall gazed around the pub he used to come to so often, fondly. 
that was still the same scuffed dark wood bar with bottles of whiskey pinned to the back wall like he remembered. The golden wallpaper on the walls glowed gently underneath the cosy lighting and people enjoying their drinks sat up at the bar on grey and brown checkered stools. A small group of regular sipped pints and congregated around the flat screen TV on the far wall, cheering and jeering at the rugby on the screen. Niall had been to many Irish bars in New York City in the hopes of getting a taste of home, but they all fell short of authenticity. They were more like some kind of film set you'd find in Hollywood studios than what you would actually find in Ireland. And they didn't have the same welcoming vibe that a true Irish pub had. In typical New York fashion, everybody kept to themselves. Whereas in a true Irish pub, everyone spoke to everyone. From the moment Niall and Shane walked into the Glencloy Inn, they were greeted by several familiar faces. Niall noticed Fergal, the landlord, behind the bar, as he always had been for the past 15 years. Upon seeing Niall walk through his doors, Fergal had called out in his gravelly voice, Well, look who's back from the big smoke. It's good to see you back, kiddo. Niall sat at the table, waiting for Shane to return with their drinks, and glanced around the room to see if there were any other faces he recognised. That's when he spotted her. Sat across the way, at a small circular table in the corner by the log fire, cradling half a pint of lager, was Kira. She looked almost the same as she had when she was just 16 years old. A smattering of light freckles dotted across her nose, and her big green eyes sparkled like emeralds as they reflected the flames of the fire. She was wearing a green bobble hat on top of her head, and her red curls flowed down to her shoulders. She was smiling and laughing, her smile lighting up the room, like it always had done. She was sat opposite a broad man, who Niall could only see the back of, and Niall felt a sudden pang of jealousy hit him. He shook it off and tried to catch her eye. Kira's eyes darted away from her companion, and she locked eyes with Niall. Immediately, her green eyes grew wide, and her mouth dropped open. Kira and Niall hadn't seen each other since they were 18 years old. They had gone to the same high school, and parted ways once they jetted off to their respective universities. He had gone to Queen's University in Belfast, while she jetted off to Edinburgh University in Scotland. Niall had been so envious of her at the time. He was jealous that she was getting out of Northern Ireland and moving to another country. Perhaps that had been where his urge to work abroad had started. But here she was, back in County Antrim, all these years later. Niall had always thought of Kira as the one who got away. He had spent most of his teenage years trying to win her over. And then, once he had finally bagged her as his girlfriend, they were beginning to plan out their futures and apply to separate universities. 
almost as soon as they had started dating. They'd been pulled apart. Niall had often wondered what had become of Kira over the years, and now he may get the chance to find out. Kira excused herself from her table across the bar and walked over to Niall. She beamed down at him and said, Hey stranger, in the same deep twangy voice she had as a teenager. Niall's memories of her all came flooding back. He stood up and hugged her and they began chatting in the same familiar way they always used to. It was as if no time had passed at all. Kira had clearly kept up to date with what Niall was up to, as she immediately proclaimed, It was New York treating you. I can't believe you got out of here like you always wanted to. Do you love it there? Niall played it cool and gushed about his stylish modern apartment and his high-flying career. Kira looked dazzled as she listened. He wanted to appear as confident as possible in front of her. It seemed to be working. He asked her what she was doing back in County Antrim and she admitted that she was living back here again. She explained how after she finished studying at Edinburgh University, she had longed for a slower pace of life. Living in a fast-paced city hadn't been to her liking, and she much preferred being around the people and the places she knew and loved. Niall couldn't help but feel like Kira was always a step ahead of him. She had wanted to move out of Ireland before he did. Then she had changed her mind and wanted to return to Ireland for a more relaxed way of life. The longer he was here, the more he felt himself feeling that way too. Shane returned to the table with their pint. And after all the pleasantries had been done, Kira declared that she should return to her table. But first, she took Niall's phone number with the intention of arranging a catch-up. Niall knew that every minute he didn't hear from her would be agony from here on out. As Kira walked away, he felt like the same shy schoolboy who couldn't pluck up the courage to speak to her all those years ago. He didn't know what it was about this trip back to Ireland, but he felt like he was being called back to the life he once led, the person he once was. He wasn't sure yet if that was a good thing or not. Thankfully, he didn't have to wait long to hear from Kira. The very next morning, Kira texted him to say how nice it was to bump into him, and they arranged to meet up for a long walk along the coastal path just a few days later. Niall spent the next few days meeting up with old friends, visiting his brother Rory, and getting to know little Kian and enjoying quality time with his parents. Sitting on the sofa and watching TV had never felt more relaxing than it did with his parents by his side. He enjoyed a home-cooked meal each evening and would wake every morning and go for a jog around the village, reacquainting himself with all the old spots. When the day came to meet Kira, he had butterflies in his stomach. No woman had ever made him as nervous as Kira did. She possessed such a radiance that stood out from others. She had the ability to make you feel great about yourself, all the while 
leaving you floored by her intelligence, wisdom, and kind heart. It was raining that day, as it did most days in Northern Ireland. But that didn't put Kira off. She ordered Niall to put on his best raincoat and wellies and meet her at the head of the limestone path on the Larne side of Glen Arm. Niall dutifully did as he was told. When he arrived at the head of the path, Kira was already waiting there. The hood of her black raincoat was pulled up over her head, but Niall could see her hair underneath was drenched at the ends. She was wearing bright pink Wellington boots and held two flasks in her hands. She passed him one of the flasks, winked mischievously and said, I've made it Irish for you. The two of them walked along the coastline path, overlooking the rumbling sea below. The waves lapped back and forth against the black and white pebbled beach, and the sky was filled with grey clouds that shielded the sun. Niall could have sworn he saw a seal pop its head out of the water at one point, before it disappeared beneath the rolling waves. The two of them walked along the coastal path, talking about everything and anything. It turned out that while Niall had been working and living in New York, Kira had returned home and become a school teacher. She lived in Ballymena with her parents while she saved up to buy a house of her own. Niall couldn't help but notice how calm and content Kira was. She spoke about her life without an inch of embarrassment or regret. She openly spoke about how hard she had found living in Edinburgh, alone, and how she had come to her decision to move home after a year of working in the Scottish city. Kira suddenly stopped walking and looked out over the cliff top and down to the beach below. I walk along here often, just to take it all in. She confided in him. I spent a long time longing to run away from here, thinking that I could never become something if I stayed in the same place I grew up. But once I went away, I realized that everything I ever needed was here. I'm so lucky to live in such a beautiful part of the world. Who cares what other people think, as long as I'm happy? As if by magic, the rain stopped pouring and the clouds dispersed to reveal the bright sun. The rays of light bounced off the water below and the gulls came out from hiding and began to fly through the sky once more. Look, Kira whispered, pointing out to sea. Niall watched, absolutely mesmerized, as a pod of dolphins appeared and started jumping in and out of the water. Kira smiled and said, they pass through these waters every year, but you have to be very lucky to catch it. It looks like our luck is in. They sat down on the soggy ground and watched the dolphins in silence. They could hear the clicking of the dolphins communicating with each other and squeaking with delight. It was joyful to watch. This was something you didn't get in the cities wild nature at its finest. The weather may not have been perfect and it may not have been very glamorous but there was a comfort, simplicity and beauty in this life in Ireland that Niall had failed to notice when he was younger. It was only now that he was older and had got lost in the sea of the city, 
that he truly appreciated what was here. There was his family. There were his friends. There was rural beauty on his doorstep. And there was Kira sitting beside him. Maybe that was all he needed to be happy. He had always wanted to be successful, but he had to wonder, was chasing a successful career what would make him happy in the end? How do you measure happiness and success in the first place? Maybe it could be found here, in the place it all started, with the people and places he knew best. The longer he stayed in Northern Ireland, the less he wanted to leave. And when Kira turned to look at him with her sparkling eyes and smile that lit up every room, he hoped that she didn't want him to leave either. <laughs>